Senator Jeff Merkley, it's always a pleasure talking with you, especially on days like this when we have so much to talk about here. Let's talk first about the federal troops in Portland. Uh, I know you're one of the sponsors of the Preventing Authoritarian Policing Tactics on America Street Act, which, as I understand it, would require individual and agency IDs on officers' uniforms and prevent unmarked cars. But in a press conference yesterday, Homeland Security officials said there are clear markings on each uniform and unmarked cars are standard procedures for pretty much every law enforcement agency around the world. So what does your laws or you what does your bill do and how do you respond to what the DHS said yesterday? Well, it's standard procedure for dictators and authoritarian governments to use unmarked vans, unmarked cars, and and sweep people off the, off the street with this kind of secret police strategy, but it's not uh, the strategy here in America. And in fact, uh, when I first raised this after the uh, officers in camouflage with no organizational or individual ID uh, swept people off the street, the, the head of the CBP, Mark Morgan, said, absolutely not, we have markings, both for the organization and for the individual. Uh, he was either deeply informed uh, based on the understanding of past practices uh, or was misleading the American public. This is an outrageous tactic. Uh, it is uh, completely unacceptable and it quite frankly derives from, from Trump's admiration for authoritarian governments around the world that use this tactic and now he's brought it to America and we must end it. Uh, there are also, as I understand it, border patrol agency, uh, border patrol agents in Portland, and uh, as I understand it as well, CPB officers can be here because we're within 100 miles of the ocean, which seems to make sense that, or seems seems to imply that anybody within 100 miles of a border would be under the thumb of this per this particular. Uh, group of law enforcement. W what do you say about that? Well, we're really focused on the issues of uh, their role in crowd control, which is different than immigration and enforcement. I, th I think it's outrageous to have a hundred mile boundary on, on the immigration side, uh, saying basically for most of Oregon, they can go anywhere and do anything they, they want. Uh, but my bill would say so if you're protecting federal properties, you've got to be on that federal property or on the near perimeter. If you want to start sending people through the streets outside that near perimeter of a federal property, you have to have the permission of the governor or the mayor. And you've got to have ID and you have to disclose to the American people how many people from what agency you're sending to which city. Now, let's talk about the, the bill that you're a, a co-sponsor on it. And, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's both a standalone bill and it's also an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act. So uh, what are the chances of its passage in Congress and, and, uh, and uh, where, where does it stand right now? So it has a significant chance. Uh, you have almost all Democrats have now sponsored the bill since I, or, and the amendment since I introduced them uh, two days ago. Uh, the, I've talked to a number of Republicans who support the principles. They're not co-sponsoring, but they might well vote for it if we can get it to a vote. Uh, I have certainly uh, the support of the leadership in the Senate getting it to a vote on a future bill or getting it into a, a bill. Uh, we have uh, a challenge that there's only a few must-pass bills coming through. On uh, the defense authorization on the House side, it was already locked up. On the Senate side, it's in control of the Republicans, so they're blocking con consideration of this amendment. Uh, the Corona bill is another uh, opportunity. Uh, the House has already passed their Corona bill, so we can't get into that side. So we're working every angle we can, because if the Senate and House are doing their job, issues like the deployment of secret police in our cities will be debated and voted on on the floor of the House and the floor of the Senate. The challenge is we're not doing our job, and that speaks to the current leadership of the Senate, and it speaks to the the, the kind of the rigged systems that have been put into to place. So I'm going to, to find every opportunity. I'm going to keep pushing. Americans do not want secret police patrolling their streets and throwing people into unmarked vans. And they do not want uh, basically CBP agents uh, doing crowd control uh, and uh, proceeding to beat up peaceful protesters. Think of that Navy veteran standing peacefully 
being attacked by two police wielding batons while a third one pepper sprays him in the face. And he's just standing there. And if anyone doubts that, watch the video. This is outrageous conduct by a secret police strategy under Trump, and we have to end it. Uh, all right. I know we have short time, but I, I have to ask you this. I know you were just on the floor of the Senate and you talked about uh, the, uh, the inspector general uh, investigations that you want into all of this. Uh, what is the status of those and do you think those investigations will begin? Yes, yeah, Senator Wyden and I have uh, joined or led the delegation in, in asking for the inspector generals uh, to investigate uh, that is uh, both the Inspector General of the Department of Justice and of Homeland Security. It certainly merits investigation doing, due to the really egregious, horrific uh, uh, practices that we've seen on the, on the streets. Uh, our Attorney General in Oregon has also uh, pushed for uh, an investigation in a lawsuit. Appreciate her, our House members have. Uh, there is uh, concern now across the nation because President Trump, after bragging about attacking Portland in a campaign appearance, proceeded to say he wanted to do the same thing in Baltimore, in Philadelphia, in New York City, in Detroit, in Chicago, and in Oakland. He's trying to create riots across America through secret police tactics as a campaign strategy. And I want all of America to understand what he's up to it's absolutely unacceptable in a we the people democratic republic. We have to stand together, every citizen, for the civil rights of all. Uh, let's, uh, let's move uh, topics here because we can talk about that for quite a while. But uh, the pandemic continues. And, and I know that uh, uh, Mitch McConnell said Tuesday uh, there were going to be another COVID-19 relief package, but there's a disagreement over how it's going to go out and if there's a delay in approving the next round of aid. Um, and I know that, the, as I understand it, the Senate Republicans uh, stripped out billions of dollars, or the, or the White House stripped out billions of dollars for testing and contact tracing. So where does the coronavirus relief package stand now, and what do you think is going to happen in the next few days, because it's coming to a pretty short period of time? Well, it's been two months since the House passed the relief package known as the HEROES Act, and it had a huge help for state and local government, which they need all across this country, supported by Democratic and Republican officials, from the governors down to the city councilors. Uh, it had $75 billion for testing and tracing, which is the only strategy that gets us ahead of the coronavirus. And in just a completely bizarre act, President Trump did ask to all the testing money to be stripped out. It's just hard to imagine what he's thinking. I think it comes from his argument that if you test more people, you get more positives, and he wants us to pretend the disease is gone. But it's not gone. And the only way people quarantine is to know whether or not they are sick, or, or even if they're not symptomatic, uh, that they can have the disease and can spread it. They need to quarantine. So you, you have to test, and you have to get the test results fast. Um, you know, by the way, Tim, I had, uh, pushed for a national strategy and required one in a, in a previous uh, amendment on a corona package. And the, the administration did produce as required their national strategy and their national strategy was in essence, let the states figure it out. This lack of national leadership means hundreds of thousands more people being infected in America and tens of thousands more dying. It's a complete abdication of uh, leadership. Senator Jeff Merkley, it is a busy time for all of us, and I appreciate you giving us a few minutes of your time today. Best of everything to you, sir, and please stay healthy. You, yes, stay healthy. Take care. Thanks.